You may be aware of recent news headlines, new glasses solve colorblindness, or gene therapy cures colorblindness. And these headlines bother me because while it's true that for the 8% of men, and it is sex-linked, colorblindness can provide some difficulties with everyday tasks or limit career choices, such as some electrical work, I'm excited to tell you that colorblindness can actually be an advantage in some situations. Now, I study color vision in humans and in non-human primates, and I'm particularly fascinated by capuchin monkeys. They're this small neotropical monkey, lives in Costa Rica, and they have really variable color vision. Over half of the population is colorblind, similar to the types of colorblindness we see in humans. The males, just like in humans, only have one X chromosome, and on that X chromosome, there is a gene that codes for a certain type of sensitivity to color. Now, some males have a green gene, codes for sensitivity to green light. Other males have a red gene, codes for sensitivity to red light. Now, the females, because they have two X chromosomes, if they have two different types, they have sensitivity to green and red, and importantly, they can now tell the differences between green and red objects. So, what does color look like to a monkey anyway? This is the cool part. We go into the forest, we follow them around, we collect fecal samples, and we bring it back here to the lab. And then we're able to actually extract the DNA out of these fecal samples, send it off for sequencing. And by examining particular amino acids in the sequence, we can predict what colors they see. Pretty neat. Well, is color vision important to a monkey? That's a question I'm really interested in. And so I followed these monkeys around in the field, and what I'm finding is, like humans with good color vision who can tell a red sweater from a green sweater better, the monkeys with good color vision are perhaps able to tell a red fruit from an unripe green fruit or from green background leaves. So they probably have an advantage eating some fruits. What's really exciting, and something we didn't expect, was the colorblind monkeys have an advantage too. They're able to capture camouflaged insects. They do it faster, they do it more effectively, and so they get a nice protein snack. Yeah. The reason we think they can do this is because color can actually impede our ability to see patterns and textures and borders. And so by cutting right through that, if you're colorblind, you can see the camouflaged object better. And it's not just bugs. They have to avoid camouflaged predators, such as boa constrictor. Now, the cool thing about monkeys is that they live in groups, and if one of them sees a predator, they give a sharp alarm bark. So all the other monkeys benefit from hanging out with this monkey. So rather than being a disease, colorblindness can help these monkeys stay alive and pass on their genes to their kids. Well, let's take a step back and think about humans again. Scientific studies have shown that colorblind humans can break camouflage better as well. There's even reports in the military that colorblind people are especially effective as snipers. So to me, this suggests that instead of thinking it's a problem or a disease, we need to start thinking really hard about what types of tasks or careers or duties colorblind people could do more effectively. If we can do this, perhaps we'll start seeing some new headlines.